Welcome to the Channel for Grace. Jago Bend will be live shortly. Book a tarot or astrology reading on our website, channelforgrace.guru, and check out our latest programs and classes. Please give us a share and a like, and we hope you enjoy the broadcast. Welcome to the Channel for Grace. Jago Bend will be live shortly. Book a tarot or astrology reading on our website, channelforgrace.guru, and check out our latest programs and classes. Please give us a share and a like, and we hope you enjoy the broadcast. Welcome to the Channel for Grace. Jago Bend will be live shortly. Book a tarot or astrology reading on our website, channelforgrace.guru, and check out our latest programs and classes. Please give us a share and a like. Satnam and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jai Gobind and this is your channel for grace. I am so freaking excited today. We are so freaking excited today to talk about Robert Grant's astrology, human design and jinkies and how he embodies his life purpose. So with me here today, I have Arielle McGuire, who I've had the amazing time of getting to know in these last year and months. And she is here to talk about all this amazing stuff with us. So I, I would love for you to introduce yourself. Hello. Yes. Thank you so much for having me back. Uh, my name is Arielle McGuire. I'm an intuitive. I'm an accountant, a mother of four daughters, um, a business coach of sorts, and I'm super into human design, gene keys, astrology, and all of that. Um, and so, yeah, I'm super excited about um, this broadcast today, and I'm excited to be back on the channel. So thanks for having me. Yay, you're welcome. Super excited um, as well. And we, you know, I had, so, so far we've talked about, we've done a show on Matias de Stefano. We did another one on Teal Swan. We also did David, David Palmer, the Leo King. And today we're doing Robert Grant and Robert Grant ha has been someone that I've been getting more into his work and what he has to share with the world recently. And he has literally blown my mind. And what we would like to do with this show and with all of the future shows that we do like this is to showcase people who are doing amazing things in the world so that they so that humanity can evolve and also to show by kind of um, showcasing them and how their design is really being seen in the world in what they do and what they share how you can also fully embody your unique design in all of the areas of your life and you're going to get to learn about astrology and you're going to get to learn about human design and you're going to get to learn about the gene keys because naturally when we talk about these things they can be very educational so that is why we're here and we are going to begin by sharing a little bit about our experience with like how we 
discovered Robert Grant and what is our connection to him and just kind of generally what we think about him. Do do you want to start for us? Sure. This one's funny because we've kind of gone back and forth with like picking people and then it being super synchronistic for the other person. So this one you chose and I was like, I was like, I recognize the name. Like I know I've seen this guy on TV. And so I started looking into it and I'm like blown away. This is right up my alley of like the things I'm most interested in right now that just like tickle my mind, Um, which is like how the universe is like made of or can be described with math and then also sacred geometry um, and decoding a ton of um, stuff from like ancient, just all the ancient sites on the planet, um, especially in Egypt. And there's such strange connections for me because I've been synchronistically getting messages um, from the archetype of Horus and Thoth or Thoth. And so he's connected to all of this and it just brought me back to the very beginning of my awakening when I was watching like Gaia TV, like crazy. I've totally seen his stuff, but like came away from it. And so it's just very interesting timing for me to come back to this right now. And then of course I got, I dove into his, um, his work and started looking through his human design and his gene keys. And I find him just freaking fascinating i don't even understand how a human is alive and has accomplished this much yeah whilst and still going like he's he seems young enough to me that he's gonna still do this for like another like 20 years or something like or more every time yeah it's incredible i started looking (laughs) i started looking like deeply into him it's incredible all the different things he has accomplished and has in place and has discovered like what a cool dude. dude so what about I you know. <laughs> yes no I know 100% and I have um I encountered him I think I, I can't remember but some I think it was through Matias like he promoted the Gaia series that Robert Grant did which is called the Codex and I remember at first Matias was like, you guys got to watch this series. It's like freaking fascinating. And I was like, of course, I'm going to do what Matias tells me to do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I was like, okay, I got to check this guy out. I got to see what this is. And when I, I started watching it and I just got like sucked in and I've watched, I've watched every single episode and I've watched them multiple times now. It's crazy. Like the amount of just mind blowing things that he has discovered that he has studied that he continues to like uncover like he basically has like like completely submerged himself or like totally feels like to me just like surrendered to to the work and has has really become i feel like virtuoso you know what i mean in in this whole geometry math like philo math and music and sound and putting it all together it's oh, it, yeah, it's sound. really yeah. mind-blowing like the whole thing yeah. is just like wow so yeah super accomplished person i feel like he is definitely here to bring a new like thing into the world and to inspire us to do the same for us i love this is what I love about seeing people that are really shining in the world in this whole like sphere of spirituality and evolution and enlightenment are people who completely give themselves to the work because that's what we need. And, and I feel like that's so funny because I'm already going to like his gene keys in my mind, but most people I feel like live lives of mediocrity, (laughs) you know, not Robert Grant. (laughs) And I love that. It's so inspiring, you know? Yeah, totally. And all of this is in his design, especially sort of like the surrender to discovering and like that continuous, just complete surrender into the discovery. We'll get into it. But yeah, he's super interesting guy. I forgot about the sound, the whole connection to sound frequency, which is what makes all of it so interesting to me. And I was even looking on his website and he's like created a cryptocurrency. He's solved like sacred geometry, math problems that like humanity couldn't solve yet. He's got patents for like different wavelength 
laser stuff like he's there's a whole there's a whole bunch and he sits on all these different boards for all these different um organizations that he's a part of tons of charity stuff like the guy i don't understand i mean he's a generator so (laughs) there there you go that's why that explains a lot (laughs) we actually i don't think we've done a show where we've like done a spotlight of a generator I know, before. I know. That's the way this and, is. And so cool. like how much they can build because he's built a lot of stuff. Right. <laughs> Especially when they're doing what they love, which is the whole point mm-hmm. of being a generator. You're like the, the little army of the world here to like channel that life force energy of the planet. And the way that you know that you're doing it right is your what you do love you love it and then it gives it feeds you energy. And it's like you mm-hmm. have infinite amounts of energy to like go 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 totally yeah yeah he's a super amazing guy he also like we mentioned has a series on gaia tv called the codex and dude so basically like a little sneak peek of that because i want to i want to invite you guys to actually go check it out in the first episode he talks about how he's he deciphers he has deciphered the uh, Vitruvian Man, his, the Da Vinci's most famous image, picture, drawing, sketch, whatever you want to call it, and how in the sketch, in the drawing, you get all of the measurements of the Great Pyramid of freaking Giza. But not just that, like possible things pointing to rooms that haven't been discovered and the connection between like the Giza pyramid and like the chakras. I mean, it's, it's like, it, it'll blow your mind just like in one episode, you're like, what? So yeah. obviously he's very, he's been very, very drawn to studying ancient Egypt and the Giza pyramid and specifically the King's chamber. And he has actually discovered things within the chamber that were not discovered before like the alpha omega on the tomb um that's in the king's chamber and among other things on the walls he's like yeah it's it, it's mind-blowing stuff so i feel like for sure to me when i think there's certain like people that i see and that i connect with that i feel like oh dude like there's past life power here you know like I, there, there's a resonance there's like um you know like I feel that with Matthias and I feel it with him as well um he was definitely like there you know <laughs> ancient Atlantis like there's no doubt in my yeah. mind and he remembers he's I've in some of the stuff I was watching he has memories like Matthias does mm-hmm. of, that's right um that's right you know, past lives on earth from that time that have been hit. These memories have been activated when he's at some of these sites, these sacred sites, Mm -hmm. which is even more fascinating. Mm -hmm. Actually listening to the two of them talk to each other. It, it was like they had met their match sort of (laughs) in terms of like someone who can speak um, at a certain level. And, and it brought it for me, it was like, I could see in past lives, they must have been connected. Like there's something that's going to blossom, I think, out of them getting connected on that podcast. Oh, I'm Anyways. sure of it. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> no, totally. Yeah. Um, and it was so fun to watch them get to know each other, especially, I mean, I'm sure they know each other outside of that podcast, but it kind of seemed like during that podcast, they were like discovering new things about themselves, um, about each other and how intricately connected their work is although very different very similar like they are doing the same kind of work and that's what i love is all of these people coming together because like i mean you know (laughs) how amazing is like it tells me that things are moving you know that's what it that's what it shows me that like the powers are coming together towards you know the real true like hidden mysteries to discover the the mysteries that are hidden within um plain sight and to help us to like really embody those mysteries so it is freaking phenomenal so we would love to talk about 
both like all his astrology, his human design and his gene keys. So we're going to kind of share a little bit of each and we might go back and forth between the topics because we get inspired by one thing and we find a connection somewhere else. <laughs> so we're, we may be all over the place, but overall, I hope you guys really enjoy us diving into who Robert Grant is and um, how he is embodying his purpose, his mission. So I just want to go over his astrology chart um, on the screen really, uh, not really quickly, but <laughs> as quickly as possible. And some of the things that stand out about his chart to us. And I also wanted to talk about something that I haven't talked about before, which is um, starseed markings in his chart. So did you want to talk to us about like the, the, the big three energies in his chart? Sure. I mean, I think um, it's so the, the main thing is that he is a Taurus sun, Gemini moon, um, and but they're both in his eighth house. So like huge transformative energies in his life. Mm -hmm. um, and then he's a rising Libra. So it's really interesting to me that he's like this likely within himself incredibly transformative person but probably not viewed that way at all and he doesn't and it honestly he seems very um calm cool-headed kind of laid back energy which is that sort of more libra energy mm -hmm. um so it's a really interesting combination especially with the sun and moon um together there in the mm -hmm. eighth house yeah and then he's he, he's got um Chiron in his sixth house, which for some reason stood out a lot to me sort of with those energies. It's like, I imagine that he probably had, I don't know anything about his life, but that he probably had some kind of, um, you know, health transformative stuff. I mean, he was in pharmaceutical. And so who knows what he experienced that fed into his awakening. I'm just guessing here based on, you know, mm -hmm. a couple things that I know about him. Mm -hmm. um, because we all know that in order to get to that point of awakening that he's clearly at, like we've got to have some kind of usually yeah. kicker. So yeah. I, and, I, it and, makes me wonder um, how that happened for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and Chiron, um, Chiron is um, the wounded healer. And so in the astrology chart, it represents his journey, his personal journey of healing, like his core wound. And he's got that Chiron in Aries, which is about, finding yourself, which means that he right now during these like last few years and stuff, he's been, he's already gone through it, but um, his Chiron return. And when you get to your Chiron return, because right now Chiron is in Aries. So that means it has returned for him already. You really reach sort of like the climax, the completion, the understanding of your wound and the healing of the wound and you start to really embody like the gift frequency of for Aries is, you know, knowing who I am, um, really stepping into myself, you know, it's a very self kind of um, being courageous, you know, stepping into courage, whereas before it could have been a lot of fear in his life of stepping up and, and kind of doing the whole even though Aries isn't the fool card, I always think of Aries energy as the fool that takes a leap into the void, jumps off the edge, has zero idea of what's on the other side, but just fully trusts and that he's been learning that lesson throughout his life. And I feel like based off of everything that he shares and um, gives to us that he has definitely stepped into his power really and started to take action too because that's what Aries represents it is power um action so super powerful with that and then what I wanted to say about the eighth house the sun and um uh and moon in the eighth house is yes his life is basically a series of very transformative events that affect him at a deep soul level and so he's going to always be like going through that death and rebirth cycle over and over in his whole life. Like it'll never stop, which is obviously like if you're constantly in that energy, you you like take quantum leaps, you know. So super powerful. 
did you want to share a little bit about what um, the his North Node in Pisces? Um, I hadn't even looked at his North Node. Oh, no, I did. Yes. He's got North Node Pisces fifth house. This is an interesting placement because um, like I can see how I can see why he built such a big material empire, I guess, because North Node fifth house um, is really about kind of like the nice thing, the nice material things like the, you know, um, it's Leo and things, you know, the fifth house yeah. is ruled by Leo. And so it's like, go big or go home, you know, that's Leo right there. Oh, why am I connecting that to um, Taurus? For some reason in my brain. Taurus is also that frequency of quality versus quantity. And he does have a Taurus son. And so he does embody that as well. Oh, that's why. Yeah, that's why his Taurus son. Yeah, yeah material yeah, yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. I love, and then yeah. I guess also Pisces North Node is, I mean, um, that's like the most spiritual uh, sign. And so no wonder he's... Um, sort of following his subconscious it's like he's unlocking his subconscious as um his life sort of um what's pulling him forward in life which is really interesting it's amazing and so it's really what's really cool to me about this uh duality of the nodes he's got north node pisces south node virgo north node in the fifth house south node in the eleventh house which Technically, also, can you can say his north node is in Leo and his south node is in Aquarius, which that's actually super interesting to me. But when you have north node Pisces, south node Virgo, the duality is this one. You, in, the, in a past life, in the past, you have focused a lot on the details of things. He's really good at the details. <laughs> this is also like the natural gifts that you come into the world with like it's very clear in his work you know what i mean like you gotta you know, sit down focus like put the glasses on kind of a thing and he's supposed to channel those gifts of precision is what i would call perfection and precision you know what i mean towards a spiritual purpose a spiritual destiny the duality of like virgo and pisces talks about how with Virgo, you have to stay really present. And with Pisces, you have to remember your higher self, like remember the divine, remember the God frequency. And so he's moving, He he his whole life, and, and I remember too, Vir, Virgo also has to do with like doctors and health, right? You talked about that a little bit. And having that South Node in Virgo, and I know that he started off in like um, pharmaceutical industry, which is super Virgo to me anyways, my, my own personal opinion. And he, tr he like totally changed gears, I'm assuming at some point, or opened up a new, you know, started to really follow his passion. Um, maybe pharmaceutical wasn't necessarily his passion. And so like something led him to another thing. And then his passion was really awakened. And it led him on a spiritual journey which is exactly what his life is meant to do with North Node Pisces. It's uh, let it bring the divine into the physical experience, connect with God, connect with the infinite. Pisces is the, the void, you know, it's the subconscious. It's like we're all ideas and it's like the cosmic mind, you could say. Sometimes even described as like the Akashic records, you know, so it's like, it's like jumping to the ocean is basically like his cliche of, like his purpose. And it's so beautiful because as he does that, as he's done that, he's also jumping into recognition and really shining bright, which is that Leo energy in the fifth house being recognized for like what he's actually doing. And in that whole process is about him really like trusting his own heart and letting his passion and his creativity just out flow out no no holding back anything at all and as he does that he like is literally shining his whole heart bright into the world and and like really fully embodying it himself because leo is about it's not self-centered but in a way it is it's like being fully yourself and being 
like being recognized for who you are. Whereas like the Aquarius would be being like a, your unique self, but like seeing that perspective in a sea of all these other unique people, Leo really stands out. Leo's the one that stands out. Aquarius would be the one that maybe kind of blends in a little bit more um, because they don't like it. And I'm not talking personally about any Aquarius people, but <laughs> Aquarius energy would not mind just like being its own thing, maybe not shining bright, but Leo is definitely about like, hey, look at me and look at what I'm doing. So that's what I love about his node energy and also having Chiron conjunct, it's within orb, his north node has a lot, brings up a lot of his journey. His destiny is one of healing, like healing the wound, his core wound. So it is really, uh, really powerful. Um, before I talk about the starseed markings, is there anything else uh, according to uh, regarding his astrology that you wanted to share? Um, no, not really. I mean, I think the, the, the last thing is just he's got a really interesting 11th house, but you sort of already hit on that with his south node sitting there and Jupiter really just expand and Pluto all just expanding. So I bet what you were saying um, sounds I wonder if that happened to him where he had some sort of like was more going towards his south node and then switched gears towards his north node which is, I think what a lot of us experience in life because like we're good we're naturally good at our south node so we follow that way first he's got really expansive energy there um so yeah but I think you touched on mostly on most of that I'm really interested to see to hear about his star seeds marking so yeah, why don't yeah, you tell totally. us about that yeah totally um and also what I was going to say about the south node in Virgo in the 11th house is he's re really good at networking too because that uh, Aquarius energy, 11th house energy is about connections and networks. And um, so love that. And he's also a 2-4 <laughs> in his human design I was going to say, yeah, that comes in in his fourth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we can kind of see it there. And it's totally a natural progression to like focus on South Node stuff. Then eventually like, boom, like, okay, now I'm in my journey of the unknown moving towards like something amazing. So yeah, one new thing that I was going to bring in um, that I am bringing in to this broadcast that we have not done before is the starseed markings in his chart. And so I do starseed readings and um, starseed astrology. I'm actually going to be doing a whole school on this if you're interested. Um, starts March 22nd and there's a link in the bio. But um, basically what are starseed markings in a chart? They show us the connections between his like cause it's like a cosmic soul perspective some people say that when you have certain starseed markings you've had past lives on other solar systems on other stars on other planets and then another perspective i like to use all the perspectives but another one is that your soul your cosmic soul aligns with and connects with a lot of the like you embody a lot of the qualities of these starseed energies when you have starseed markings and so it's kind of like looking at your chart in like um multi-dimensional cosmic perspective that is actually really cool so his sun is 25 degrees of taurus which is one degree away from a star called algal and i love to to find also hawthor and venusian starseed markings as well which are they're a little bit different to find but i feel this is a, very, a major one a really powerful one so algal is interesting because algal is well, she's actually known to most astrologers as the the Death Star, <laughs> you know. Um, she's Medusa. And if you know the story of Medusa, um, the real story of Medusa, actually you can see like the magic found within this energy. So Medusa was originally one of the priestesses, I believe in Athena's temple. And Poseidon um, basically... <laughs> Uh, raped her. I mean, these these ancient mythological stories are always gnarly, you guys. So if you're if you're like what, like sorry, I'm just gonna tell the story. <laughs> but anyways, so she basically Poseidon like rapes her and stuff, and then she gets punished. Or it was Aphrodite, I believe, but she gets um, Aphrodite's temple, but she gets punished for it. Like she gets blamed and punished for it, and like transformed into this like demon with like snakes for her hair and stuff like that. 
and um, she becomes this like ugly thing, right? Because originally it was like she was coveted because she was like one of the most beautiful priestesses. And so that happens to her, which sucks really bad. And then, you know, one look from her eyes can petrify you is the curse that she now has. And then eventually, though, the, the connection to another story, which is a story of Andromeda through Perseus, Perseus finds Andromeda chained to a rock in the sea. And he has co he's coming from having defeated Medusa, which the way he defeats Medusa is he chops off her head, but he keeps the head and he, he uses the, the head of Medusa to petrify the sea monster that is coming for Andromeda. <laughs> and Andromeda is all about the liberation of the soul. The, the, the symbolism of Andromeda is like liberating the soul. And so once Perseus liberates Andromeda, then in, when you really think about it, it was Medusa that freed the soul eventually because he used Medusa's head. So for me, the power of Medusa is also connected to that energy of like liberating the soul. And it's a Hathor starseed marking. And if you know anything about Hathor, in my personal opinion, um, she is known as, she's the cow goddess in uh, ancient Egypt, in the mythology of ancient Egypt. Her temple is the temple of Dendera or the temple of Hathor. It's one of the temples that we go through in the moon goddess training. And it's the temple where we learn all about astrology and the connection between ourselves here in the physical and the celestial world. It's all about like looking up into the scars, into the stars. That's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. But anyways, so basically we, she's the cow goddess and basically she represents the Milky Way galaxy. And so like, the milk of the galaxy, the cow goddess, like, is it starting to kind of connect really powerful stuff? She holds, she, see, Hathor, I could go on forever, you guys, so I'm going to, like, stop at some point. <laughs> I'm going to be like, okay, um, basically, Hathor in the the language, the Egyptian language is actually Hathor, which means the house of Horus. Horus is the god of the sun. And so the temple of Hathor or the temple of Dendera is the house of the sun, the house of Horus. And right above her head in the columns, there's this box. And I learned this from Matthias. And the box on top of the head of Hathor, who is one of the only uh, deities who is depicted face forward, both eyes looking straight at you. Um, there's this little box and the box you see the falcon which is horse so it's like the house of horse the house of the sun so it's like the milky way galaxy the connection to the astrology it's just crazy but anyways i i feel like it's all very divine in this way so i'm just gonna keep going because i could go on forever on each one of these he has vesta who is known as the keeper of the sacred flame so the energy that holds that sacred flame for you on freaking aldebaran um one degree away and his mercury is very close to aldebaran too i would say his mercury is a little bit more close to orion energy although i didn't i don't think i put that down but anyways um he has this aldebaran is the star um on the eye of the bull in the constellation of the bull so the taurus constellation also linked to the uh pleiades energy but Aldebaran is Archangel Michael, who literally comes to like cut the cords. But this Aldebaran energy also represents the spring equinox, the energy of the bull. And it's one of the four fixed signs. And it's one of the royal fixed stars. So like literally this energy of Aldebaran is the keeper of the sacred flame for him, which is like, psh. and um, Archangel Michael is the one that is known as the countenance of Christ. So, okay, I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> he has an Arcturus rising sign. And this is the one that I, I was like, I knew it. I was like, I'm gonna find Arcturus in his chart because the Arcturians are the ones that taught us about sacred geometry. They are the ones that brought the information of like the laws of the universe, the sacred geometry, like 
all the things that he's like that he is doing in his lifetime is right there and your rising sign is what how people see you like he's like the sacred geometry he's like the math math mathematician guy but like no, like cosmic math you know i was what i would call it and so you can really see this arcturian energy in him in his rising sign it's what we all see when we look at him cuz that's what the rising sign represents he's got neptune in the energy of centaurus which is a very shamanic energy it's like that death ritual that leads to rebirth and um neptune is also your intuition it's how you sense things so he sends things at a very deep and like uh shamanic level one of his coolest freaking markings mars uh, exactly on the great attractor and also Ophiuchus. Ophiuchus is known as the 13th sign which is the sign, the hidden sign. <laughs> Fucus is the snake bearer. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing a starseed oh reading gosh. right now. This is insane. So Fucus is the snake bearer. And obviously we know what the snake freaking represents. I mean, cosmically is like psh, the spirals and all that stuff. And um, so his Mars is on Fucus, but his Mars is also on this energy called the great attractor, which is literally... Like uh, 200,000, it's like a black hole in like the center of like the universe or it's just like, but we're all like hurling in that direction. And it's the Akashic of the universe, basically the great attractor. And Mars is action and drive. <laughs> so it's like his action and drive takes him directly towards the mysteries of the universe, uncovering the hidden things, connecting to the the cosmic mind and the energy of the cosmic mind. Kind of crazy. Um, and then, okay, so he has Venus on Andromeda. And again, that's the connection to Hathor and why I, I really felt his son is a Hathor uh, starseed marking because that whole connection with Medusa and Algol and Andromeda, they're all, and his chart is ruled by Venus, and his son is in a Venus ruled sign. You know, Venus hit itself in his chart is on Andromeda. So th they're all connected, it's all linked. It's, it's crazy. And then Venus herself represents beauty and perfection, and her actual orbit is like literal mathematical perfection. Um, she has, she's the morning star, the evening star, like she has phases just like the moon. Um, she conjuncts with the sun, just like the moon. We see her in the sky with the moon during part of the year as a balsamic energy. And then during the other part of the year as a crescent with a crescent moon. And it's like the Venus herself was the star quote unquote star, because in the ancient times it was like, she was one of the, she was the brightest star in the sky and the Mayan calendar is based off of Venus. And anyways, like I could just go on and on, but there's a lot of really powerful starseed markings in his freaking chart. And they all beautifully align with what he actually does now. He's like unique knowing um, he's a philomath, obsessed with the mathematical perfection and geometry of sound and music in a good way. And so all of that, I, I, I see all of it. So that's my two cents on his uh, starseed markings. Super crazy, right? That's so incredible. I definitely thought he had Arcturus and um, Andromeda in him. So that was really, it. that's fascinating that you found that. Because I, same connection with uh, the math stuff. But how, how fascinating. Right? Yeah. So and Horus came up again in that story. I just have to say, which is a sink that's running for me, like a crazy one that keeps coming in for me. Yes, I don't know where it's going, but at some point when I figure it out, I will let everybody know <laughs> what the heck the message is that's coming in with this. Because there's that. something more than just this, but it's trailing through yes. every everywhere that I find myself. I love it. So would you <laughs> would you like to usher us into talking about his human design? Yes, yeah. Okay. You're gonna put the human design up on yes, the screen. I will put it up on the screen. Um so he is a generator, and we haven't talked about generators yet. Um 
And I, I love generators. My husband's a generator. They go very well with projectors and I'm a projector. And so um, it's like, they're like a little counterpart. And so I can appreciate um, a lot of aspects that they have. So generators, they have auras that envelop and respond. They're very friendly. They're responding aura essentially responds to things in its environment um and they they have a lot of consistent energy um i have a three-year-old that's a generator as well and the interesting thing about a generator that kind of makes them different than like a manifesting generator is that they will find one sort of thing that they're working on um, and they can have multiple things at a time, but like really building one thing at a time. And they sort of like focus on that thing and take it to completion. So like they have, once they're like responding, if they're in their strategy and they're responding to something um, and they get like an idea or a project that they are going to build or create, they, they have the energy to like see it through. Like that thing's going to get finished and they're going to focus on that until it's finished. They're not really going to get distracted with other stuff in the meantime. So that's the really cool thing about generators. And the reason they work really well with projectors, just as a side note, is the projector kind of like guides them and helps them have the ideas. And the generator like provides the energy to accomplish the goal. Um, so they have just like a huge capacity to build things. And we can see that in uh, Robert's life, like he has built a lot of a lot of different businesses. He's written different books, different projects like, you know, he gets an inspired idea and he sees the thing through and creates something to offer to um, his audience, to the world. Right. Um, so generators need to listen to the sounds that their body makes, which basically means that um, their 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 response to their environment of like if an opportunity is for them or not is really within their body. Their body gives them a yes, no, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm kind of response. He does have um, his authority in human design is uh, most generators have a sacral authority, but he actually has. Um, an emotional solar plexus authority. So it's a little bit different where he's still responding, but he also kind of goes through an emotional wave before he knows how he feels about something or if an opportunity is for him. Um, and so that makes it so that he has to, it give, he, he has to take a little bit more time to figure things out, um, which is probably fine for him because he's got a lot going on. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um he would find himself like very satisfied when he completes a project or very frustrated if something's not working for him. So his not self theme is frustration. And, and this is something that is really amazing for generators is it's like they find a thing they want to create, they build the thing, they have the energy to do that. And then they're so satisfied at the end with their creation. Um, and, and that's just what keeps them going. And then they find their next thing. Right. And they keep building. Um, and his profile is a two, four, which I find fascinating for what he does. I would love for you to talk about it because you share the same profile type. Um, we both have this four line, but, um, I'll let you get, I'll let you take over and talk about being a hermit. <laughs> <laughs> I love kidding. it. Yes. And, and the one thing that I love about the generators is that when you, so you are here as a generator to channel the life force frequency of the planet. And the way that you know that you're doing it right is basically you, you feel satisfied with what you're doing. You feel joy, you feel bliss, you feel like so kind of ecstatic about it that the energy just keeps flowing through you. So, um, and you can really see that, that he, that's carrying him through, right? Like I can't imagine doing all the things that he does, you know, um, only a generator could. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the whole aspect of like the generator just steadily climbs forward or steadily moves forward. It's very Taurian. It's very Taurus. And he has yeah. sun in Taurus. So like there's a connection there. Like Taurus is the bull. He like grounds it himself and like just boom, like slowly moves forward. I love that. Um, okay. So the two for profile. When I found out he was a two four, I was like, of course he is. Because the thing about the two fours is that they have hidden talents and they will hide at first 
They'll be like, oh, I'm just like, you know, solving this sacred geometric problem that's never been solved in the world. <laughs> so like, it's no big deal. I don't really feel like I'm good at it. I'm just like, I'm just going to try. And then like, oh, I, oh, look, I solved it. And then people start noticing. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what the hell, dude? You're amazing. And he's probably like, no, I just put a lot of time in, you know, like, no, I just have the time to like actually look at it and, and like the passion to actually look at it. And that two line is very much about passion. It's the dancer in the gene keys. And so he just like, he's a natural. That's literally what being a two four is like you, you're a natural, you know, and you have natural talents. And at first you will kind of resist being in the limelight, but eventually you're going to get called out for those talents and your natural gifts and you're going to be recognized because that's also what that is about. And then when that recognition happens, when you're like called to come out of your cave, <laughs> then you the four line turns on, which is basically connections, networking, like sharing, you know, and, and, um, thriving in communities, um, heartfelt being of service to the world, like really, um, drives him is one of the things that really drives him. So I, I just love that he's a two, four. It's, it's an amazing energy. Um, what did you find out about his incarnation cross? So I got really into his incarnation cross for some reason. I, it like pulled me in. Um, so he has the right angle cross of contagion. And so with the right angle, that means he has a personal destiny. Um, he's sort of self-absorbed in his own process. This is, see, we're already seeing trends of things that we're talking about. Um, he's creating new karma in this life, which means he doesn't have a ton of karma that he's dealing with from past lives, which is like good. It's that's nice since all his eighth house sun moon stuff, you know, it's like it's nice to have a little easier time on some parts of your chart. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean he's creating karma in this life. Um, so it's good that he's doing so much good in the world. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Um, the law of cause and, and, and he's really here to begin things, to start things in this life. Like he's not in this lifetime is not about um, tying up loose ends from past lives. This is really all about like a new spark in this life for him. Um, people with this incarnation cross are, they have like a compelling life force, um, huge commitment to their promises, which is like that generator vibe. Um, a strong sense of power and unique contributions to bring to the world. Um, and so within this incarnation cross, so there's four, the four gates that make up his incarnation cross are gate 30. This is the gate of feelings. And so it's in his solar plexus. And it's like, the, it's like known as the gate of desire of like that clinging fire and this is basically for him, like an intense yearning for a more profound, richer life experience. So he is here living life and he needs to know more. He like his deepest desire is to understand more about this experience. Um, so that's right in his incarnation cross. Obviously, that is what opened the door to like everything he's unlocked. Um, and, and that desire and that yearn goes on and on for him. And so that's why he keeps moving from thing to he accomplishes one thing. He's on to the next thing. Um, gate 29, which is the gate of perseverance. This is in his sacral center. So this is where his motor is perseverance. This is his commitment to like anything, any project, any, um, like problem he's trying to solve right so he has this like motor sacral response to um to like persevere and like get to the finish line with things which is how he finds his answers and completes uh, you know all of the all of these big things it's just like persistent energy um his incarnation cross also has gate 14, which is the gate of power, also in the sacral, also his motor. Um, he basically just has a huge, powerful drive to bring his personal aspirations to life. So again, it's like he's in his little hermit land, pulling his thing together. And then it's like immense just power to bring that out and bring it to life. Um, and gate eight 
which is the gate of contribution. And this is in his throat. So he's got emotion, um, his motor, like his get things done and his throat all in his incarnation cross and his gate of contribution. He's contributing like all of his unique findings and things that he solves um, at, as he's on his mission to understand this experience that he's in. And he wants to bring these to the collective. Um, and so I was looking at, I don't know as much about these realms in the incarnation cross. If I don't know if you want to talk about this a little bit, but he's his, um, his personality son. So his life work, his son gate eight is in the realm of do du- doobie dube dube <laughs> dube I believe and dube what I thought was so interesting about this is that his theme is his like life purpose is fulfilled through form through bringing things from womb to room that's like and so th- this is him bringing birthing yeah. something brand new birthing like ha ah, new sacred geometry like <laughs> You know, ta da! This is in his incarnation yeah. cross. I it's love fascinating. that. Fascinating. Dube is so I I looked at like it's a star. It's actually a pretty cool star. Dube is known as a pointer star, and it is found on the the Big Dipper. It's the point of the spoon, the very like end point of the spoon, and it what does it point to? It points directly towards Polaris, which is the North Star. <laughs> North Star. That's so funny. Wow. Look at this guy. (laughs) Sometimes I get into these charts and I'm like, dang, like I guess they're getting jealous. I'm like, "Ah, I wish I had this one. (laughs) Really take it to the finish line. (laughs) Yeah. So his whole, like his incarnation cross, he dropped in at a very specific moment to bring, to birth new creative things that inspire him into this realm mm-hmm. i love it. no big deal <laughs> <laughs> i love that he's actually living out his mission though like that's the whole reason why we're doing these shows because we want to inspire you to do your thing you know to like step into your freaking destiny to like embody your unique design we all have unique design we all have all you know these gene keys and we all have everything that we need to live our like best lives we can do this too you know um so i love that thank you for sharing that about his uh his incarnation cross so i can talk about his centers and um he's got one two three four five defined centers and then one two three four uh undefined or open centers and so what this is going to do like the open and the the defined centers tell you first of all like where you're sensitive um so he has an uh undefined spleen so he's um he needs to be careful about his health he needs to um pay attention to like what's healthy for him and what's not healthy for him he also needs to be careful about the kind of people that are around him that he surrounds himself with because sometimes when you have an undefined spleen, which I also do, you tend to hang out with people with defined spleens, but that doesn't mean that you're actually safe. It just makes, it gives you the illusion of being safe. So I'm sure in his life he's had experiences where like he's been drawn to certain people, but they weren't exactly the healthiest for him. Um, but that, but it's an, it's intuitive. So you feel when other people are healthy or unhealthy because the open centers or undefined centers, they, Um, they absorb and magnify the energy of the people around you. So that's kind of one of his gifts is to be able to tell if people are sick or not. And um, he is intuitive, although he doesn't have that, you know, splenic type of authority kind of energy. So that's what makes it so that you have to be a little bit more careful with what you eat and what you, you know, all that stuff. Um, So his other um, undefined center is his throat and having an uh, undefined throat is actually um so you uh, kind of speak the words i feel like it's these are all cha- channeling energies uh, the undefined and open sensors you kind of channel through them and so the he's channeling the voices of the people around him and po- quite possibly the voices of like his spirit guides that like are like helping him along the journey and he's like channeling the voice of the divine you know what i'm saying like in these like really beautiful ways 
but it just means that he doesn't have a consistent way of speaking or communicating. So that might change depending on who's or he's around, how he's going to talk and express himself. Um, but he does have a defined G center, which means he does have a defined sense of identity and sense of self. And you can see that in him. So even though he may not have the same exact way of like expressing himself all the time or where, where that's consistent, he, he does have this consistent sense of self that he does, that you can definitely feel in him that makes him feel like maybe a little bit more grounded. Also with a defined root, he is definitely someone who can deal with the stress of life. I love that he has that. And he has a defined sacral, which is what gives him his life force energy. Um, the defined ego is definitely important because he is somebody who can definitely make promises and commit to things and see them through till the end. He has like the willpower to do that. And that's part of, uh, it's a huge part of energetically like who he is, especially because it's one of his, these are the, the also these defined centers tell you which channels um, he's got defined. So that's a he, that's a big one for him. And his defined solar plexus is what gives him his authority and makes it so that he is an emotional being um, going through the highs and the, the, the low emotional wave. So from high to a low to neutral, high, low, neutral, over and over again. And he really has to pay attention to how he feels. And it may take him a lot longer to know what to decide about certain things because he has to wait to see his feelings all the way through. The other two centers that are open or undefined um, for him are, he has an undefined Ajna. So he actually, and I love this because it's like his center is above, right? Like the head is completely open. So like he's like open to the divine frequency. Like I feel like that's his op his door to the Akashic, <laughs> you know, to the cosmic mind because that's literally what the head center is about. It's like receiving the understanding of our divine energy and our, our existence. And then through the Ajna is like we process it in the mental realm and having an open mind, literally he has an open mind, <laughs> which like allows him to like really take in and process things in, in, in many different ways. And so that's why I think he's, he's all over the place with his conceptualizing and, and that's what's led him to m make all these amazing discoveries. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, in terms of his sen his centers, how he probably experiences pe the people around him and, um, how he, he functions. So, but I, w I want to know about his channel so we can kind of tag team the channels and talk about what we found out, or maybe I can just talk about the astrology connection, however you want to do it. Either way. Um, I can do the first one. Okay. So he's got, um, so these are the, he's got four defined channels, which me means they're connected uh, between the two centers. <clears throat> and the first one I want to talk about is the 2551. So this is connecting his identity center, G center, and his ego. And this is an individual circuit. And it's the channel of initiation. So the the this channel is a design. He's designed with a need to be first. So again, we have a theme of bringing something new or being fir the first person to do something. Um, the spirit of a warrior leaps into the unknown and needs to be walking his own path. So this channel reminds me visually of someone in the forest. There are many paths, many hiking paths, but this person is like by themselves on the side with a machete, just like I'm going this way. And like, I have my tools and I will see you when I get to where I'm going. So like hundred percent, not following somebody else's coattails. Um, the channel of mystical direction. So not only does is it he like a warrior needing to go first, going into the unknown, but in a with a being led mystically, right? And like literally just leaping into the void, essentially. So he's going into the void and he's gonna bring back something that he's gonna be first at. And he's done exactly this. Um Loves to be the first person to enter a new arena. So like to bring an entire new concept. Um, 
and carries a powerful design in the business world. Um, and he's got his Venus, personality Venus, and personality and design North Node here. So just a whole theme of like he bringing a new creation into the world um, from the, the void of the subconscious land. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's amazing. I want to read from Richard Rudd's book because I love the way he, he talks about this stuff. So the um, 2551, the channel of initiation, your life is a series of leaps into the unknown. You are born, oops, you are born with the spirit of a warrior and you are here to learn to walk your path on your own. Take courage, leap when the need calls and worry about the consequences afterwards. And the cool thing about this is that it's also a mystical channel. So it's like mystical direction, leaping into the void. It's like a, the mystic journey of, you know, uncovering the fool's journey. Really, truly, he's living the life of the fool's journey. It's freaking amazing. And um, this leads us to the next channel that he has defined, which is the channel of discovery. It's the 2946. I just want to show it on the screen right there. So this one connects from his um, sacral to his uh, G center. So this is the channel that defines his sacral center and his G center, the center of identity and also the uh, the center of life force energy that channels through him. So this center is is basically called the channel of discovery. I actually love that just because that word discovery like really kind of um, defines like what he's been doing with his whole life and all of the work that he's been doing. This one and his last channel that we'll talk about next are both part of the sensing circuit which means the following. So he has like strong sensing circuit energy and strong individual cir uh, circuit energy. It, it's very much uh, similar to the, the energy in my chart. But the sensing circuit is about he has to wait for the experiences to be completed and then look back in life to understand and get like the full story and the full clarity and the full enlightenment of his life. So a lot of his life is spent going through experiences, not really understanding why or what's going on. And eventually like once they're done, like, oh, I, I see why that happened. And so he really is engulfed in it with like his channel of initiation and the channel of discovery, like in the sensing circuit energy, he's really engulfed in life, like just fully engulfed. And I love that because this specific channel is kind of like that. The 29th gate is called the gate of saying yes. <laughs> the 46th gate is the gate of determination. And once you are clear about making a commitment, which he has that defined ego, he can make the commitment. You have to totally abandon yourself to it, releasing all expectations about its outcome. In this way, you will learn there is no such thing as failure or success, but only continual discovery. And that's like literally what he's like constantly doing is discovering new things. And this is a force that drives him very powerfully at the subconscious level because this is his, it's made up of mostly subconscious um, planets. It's his... <clears throat> design earth his design earth his That's, that one's a big deal yes the and design. his design south node mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. yes and then on the person so he's got a lot of planets on the 46 gate some of them are um conscious and some of them are unconscious but at what i'm seeing is the connection of the whole gate is mostly unconscious energy which means that the, it's a natural thing that's kind of going on in the background it's like the code his coding is basically constantly pushing her, pushing him forward to say yes and to be determined to discover new things. Like, like that's crazy, <laughs> you know? This blows my mind. And then um, his last channel is also a really powerful one, which is also completely unconscious energy. So he he's probably not even aware of this, but we can see it. 
So what is that, the channel, that last channel? So the last channel is the 3041, which is the channel of recognition. And this one is connecting his solar plexus and his root. Um, so this one is all about feelings. So does, he's, does, his life is a lot focused on feelings and that is his um, authority. And so whenever he's making any decisions, really, he's needing to ride his emotional wave to discover how he feels about something in order to know if he's really in alignment with it or not. Mm -hmm. And um, so he's here to gain his wisdom through that feeling and has a profound ability to stir emotions in others as well. Um, and of course, when you're able to do that, that allows you to, to move um, large, large audiences as he does like on TV. Right. Um, and so this channel has two people, the people with this channel have two major lessons to learn in life, which is that you, you don't try and make your dreams come true. And don't expect any of your desire to bring you lasting peace. And so these are really interesting for him because um, by design, and he's got his sun and his moon and Mercury here. So by design, so unconsciously, he really has to surrender to, um, it's like when you're learning to like manifest and you have to surrender into the letting go of the thing in order to get the thing. He sort of has to do that with his whole life process and all of his life's work. It's like, it gives me the sense of like, he's doing it for nothing, but for everything. And he's just in surrender to, I am, I am the process of it. I am in the being, the now of it doesn't matter where it's going. And because that is part of his subconscious design, I think he's actually able to literally manifest quite a bit more like these things are coming out he's birthing these really big creations because he's in this full state of surrender and he's able to pull it through he puts it out and then he moves on to the next thing because he's not attached to it so it's a really interesting design it's like he's designed to create these big things and then move on from it he's not getting caught up in the ego famous land he's moving on to his next like going in hermiting here's cryptocurrency, like whatever thing he's creating. Like I was looking at his list and I was like, what is this guy doing in his, like probably in his cave, like, you know, coming up with these creations, bringing out the next thing. And so it's just really interesting how he's sort of designed to do this. And because of that, he's able to bring so much knowledge. And, and again, he's young, he's still got time to bring more and more forward. So what a fascinating combination of I know. design channels and right. circuits. I know. It's like perfect. It, it 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 blows my mind. But the, the truth is that we're looking at his design. Of course, it's going to match. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, of course, he's going to be living this out. But it's a really cool combination. And I love that this specific channel, which is the channel of recognition, like eventually you become recognized for surrendering and going through that process and discovering <laughs> things, right? Um, or the channel of discovery, but um, no recognition. So, but what I think is really cool about it is that it is his design sun and moon and his design Mercury. So it's the, the completely unconscious channel and the sun is the soul, the moon is the emotions and Mercury is the mind. And this is 88 days or 88 degrees before he was born, the position of the sun, the moon and Mercury, which is three of the biggest sort of um, personality energies in that we embody. And so I really feel he really truly embodies this like unconsciously without even thinking about it. It's just something he's doing naturally. Um, very, very cool. I was looking to see if I could find his actual, um, his actual uh, environment in his human design and his environment is kitchens. And so it's, <laughs> I didn't know that that was one. That's so funny. These, <laughs> but here's the thing these, that just, makes these that environments so crack me up. Freaking cool. Okay. This is what makes that so cool. The kit, what happens in a kitchen, the way to understand it in a kitchen, you grab ingredients, you combine them together and you make things of them. Like, 
that's literally yeah, his yeah. most active environment is where he's like creating there's a lot of you you need a lot of creativity you you need to be like intuitive about the cooking you know when you're like creating new things it's like that's the that's his natural environment and then i was looking at his freaking arrows okay where is the arrows uh right here all of his arrows point to the right all four of them yes that's insane <laughs> so he's like not even here <laughs> if, like when you have all right arrows the, the it's very rave like because the right arrows are are like the raves that are coming in 2027 that are like just pure presence you know like their magic just unfolds because they're just present and they're very like right brained, you know, open. The right brain is the feminine. It's, you know, um, the it, it's not the, the logical mind. It's more of like the creative mind, right? So he's fully, his like cognition, like all of it. He's like, even his body, like that's why he probably ha can have out of like natural out of body experiences and things like that. Cause he's literally like floating in the ethers very he's like from the future is <laughs> what i'm trying to say isn't that so crazy sorry that just like blew my mind <laughs> oh, it makes so much sense it's like such an open mind and maybe it has to do with like his uh ajna you know head op totally open head center but just really like absorbing everything because that's what the right arrows do especially with like the brain and the the cognition you're like a sponge for like the environment around you this is crazy so our last thing that we want to share is about his gene keys so let me hop on over to his chart and put it up on the screen and would you like to um, start us off i think we can kind of jump around with this one because we found some really really cool things about his gene keys yes so the first let's start with his life his life's work okay um which is also his brand sphere and the gene key he has in this sphere is the eighth gene key and he has a line two which is the dancer and the life's work sphere shows us um like what he's here to do what he's here from a brand perspective what he's here to sell or what he's here to just do with his work right mm -hmm. and what's really interesting i wrote this down before we started and you've been talking this whole time or you've mentioned several times about the fool and i wrote this down with this gene key the fool risks everything to be himself that's basically what this gene key encompasses the eighth gene key is the diamond of the self. So this is like, um, so the shadow is mediocrity. <laughs> he is not that. He's not in his shadow of this gene key at all. The gift is style and the city is exquisiteness. And I actually think he's quite in the city of this one. I think as a general statement, humans like we're often in the shadow, but we try to be in the gift. And like every once in a while, we pop into the city of our gene keys, you know? He the, he's this really embodies in this his city no. more often, I think, than in, others. In, <laughs> in most, like in a lot of the stuff that we I was looking at, I was like, oh, he's totally in the city. Like, it, it's insane. Yeah, he's yeah. an elevated, he's elevated. <laughs> it's better than. Um, and so again, with this gene key, this one is all about like, he cannot follow somebody else's path. He is his own guide and his whole purpose, what he is here to do is to find his inner light and let it shine. It's his own diamond of himself is, and to, and to literally risk everything on his own path of doing that. So like mic drop for him. I don't know. He's. <laughs> 100 percent not know, much was, else to say with was, this fear <laughs> except like way to go dude you are living your you are living your purpose and you have unlocked <laughs> your, 
your magic. Oh, okay, Way so I was listening to this Jinky earlier because I love to listen to them before we do any show, as many of them as I possibly can, the ones that draw me in. And th- this is what I found out about this one that really fascinated me. The energy of the eighth Jinky is all about being a free thinker, <laughs> which it totally is, and inspiring others to do the same. It is about not following the norm, but doing things that have never been done before. It is about allowing your creativity to flow so freely that it completely engulfs you and controls you. (laughs) This energy has a liberating effect on others. Like, yes, and a quote from the book, their very presence acts as a light to free individuals from structured patterns. And this is about taking absolute de- de- delight in being abandoned to the mystery itself. <laughs> like, just get out of here. <laughs> the themes too, what's so interesting is the themes trailing through his astrology, human design, gene keys, all this stuff. And like how you can see how he's expressing all of this. So if you are somebody who's like, what's my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing? Like you can use these systems and look for these major themes. They're running through your whole chart. How you express that, of course, you have to find out. And that is the whole great process of like this experience. But like it's fascinating to me how these themes show up over and over again. He has the same major themes. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Let's totally. keep going. What's yes, go the ahead. next sphere you want to do? Uh, go ahead and talk about the purpose. The purpose his, sphere? His, his so purpose. His purpose. This one's also really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 29th gene key and it's called leaping into the void. So like, <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> the purpose uh, gene key sphere shows us his purpose in this lifetime. Okay. Like it's straightforward. Like what is his purpose in this lifetime to leap into the void? (laughs) Um, He's a line, he's a line four here, which is breath. And this one's all about rhythm, which is really interesting because of all of his work around sound and frequency and its connection to sacred geometry and and math, all of this. Yes. And I just want to add real quick right there about the breath is that the breath is our connection to the divine. The The divine, yes, and it is our frequency, yes, the whole, yes. So the shadow here is half-heartedness. I don't think he's in the shadow. Um, Maybe in his private time. (laughs) He seems seems like he's, okay. The gift commitment, (laughs) he's got that. That's the generator right there. And the city devotion. We could say he's probably in that quite a bit as well. Yes. So this gene key of leaping into the void, this is really interesting because again, his sun and his moon in his eighth house. So this gene key is all about diving into the depths and understanding fear and limitation. And what's interesting is that we don't see this side of his work, right? This is very more probably internal. He must, I don't know, he must be doing this work because it's all over his chart. Um, But learning to love the unknown. I mean, of course, like again, and this is North Node, fifth house, uh, Pisces, Pisces, again, um, with the subconscious. There is a force. So this is really interesting. There is a force that moves through all beings. And he is here to discover that force. (laughs) That's Gene Key said. And so like with all of his... Again, like it's like he's tapping into the things he's into with the sacred geometry and the math and the sound frequency stuff. These are all like the fundamental sort of building blocks of the universe realm that we're in as we know. Like this is like the most advanced information that we have at this point. And there is there is something moving through all beings that he is here to discover. And like that is what he's doing. And this is his purpose sphere. <laughs> And he is devoted to it in his city. I just, I don't know what else to say about this guy. (laughs) He picked, he chose the, he like he chose his moment to incarnate so well, like the coincidence of having this set of gene keys. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Oh my God, that's too funny. I love that. All right. Would you like to tell us about his vocation sphere? Yes. Okay. So like when we were texting earlier and a couple days ago, 
I remember thinking um, the one thing that I really want to look at is this vocation because the vocation sphere is the one that tells us both what his core wound is <laughs> according to his gene keys and how that core wound literally becomes his vocation. I also noticed, so he's got the 14th gene key here and um, it's aligned to, which is, well, it's called, uh, it's a marketing energy, but it's really about like passion and like just flowing through life and being really kind of engulfed in it. And then I also noticed that he has this gene key in his chart twice and that kind of caught my attention. He has it in the evolution sphere and the evolution sphere is the one that tells us like it's one of the hardest lessons that we are like constantly moving through. So not only is this how he evolved, when he transmutes this specific shadow into the gift, when he does that work, he's not only evolving, he's also healing his core wound and stepping into his vocation, okay? <laughs> Just want to give you <laughs> um, some uh, uh, insight into into that before I actually talk about the jinky. This one like freaking blew my mind. So this jinky moves from the shadow of compromise to the gift of competence to the city of bounteousness. And it's one of these, so some of the gene keys are kind of elusive. You're like, what is the gift of competence? Like, what do you mean? You know? Um, and so I had to listen to it and just kind of refresh my mind into this energy. But he, his, his deep, deep, deep work in his life is to transmute this shadow of compromise into the gift of competence. So when so uh, so what happens when you compromise in life? You literally like hold yourself back from your full potential when you make compromises because for whatever reason, compromises are compromise. You could literally compromise just within yourself, you know, because of some kind of a belief system that you have that locks you fr that keeps you from taking those like quantum leaps. So that one's easy to understand. He has to transmute the shadow of compromise. He's always doing it because this is his evolution sphere and it is his core wound. But when he transmutes this shadow of compromise, he will step into his the gift of competence, which is also his vocation. The gift of competence is described as the fire in the belly, which is like super powerful. So what is competence about? And these are, you know, quotes and, and notes that I took from obviously Richard Rudd Gene Key's book. So com competence is about performing a task with complete precision and elegance in alignment with natural and harmonious rhythms. <laughs> what? People with this gene key are the driving force that can implement a particular vision or idea. To be competent means to innovate new and exciting ways of tackling things on the material plane. Like, get out of here with that shit. I, like, I, again, <laughs> I don't really have anything to say. Okay, but then we get to the city, which is, so that's exactly what it's doing. The city is bounteousness. And this is about being able to push the whole of humanity in a new direction. Like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Merely thinking of this person act who's in this city will create transformation in your own life. Just thinking about him, okay? It is about uniting <laughs> heaven and earth where the individual power and the collective power become one. It's like, like I just, uh, I can't. It is really beautiful. <laughs> All right. It's great. That's so great. In his vocation. Yeah, yeah exactly. And is, yeah, it's just solid. Solid. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one that we kind of looked at, maybe we can talk about this one together, is his pearl. His pearl. So the pearl is basically it has all to do with prosperity in your chart when you get to the pearl it like activates the energy of you would think it would be like oh it's really like 
um, extravagant. It's not like the pearl is about like what's the simplest thing that like will will literally activate this frequency of of prosperity for him and make him feel like like actually live a life of full like in his element. You know, that's kind of how I how I feel this energy, anyways. So he has the six gene key in this sphere and the descriptive phrase is a path to peace and what i found out that's really cool about it is that it's about literally having an empty boat and what richard rudd means by that is you like empty your mind you empty you become a vessel for the divine you you embody the new a new state of awareness and it is this emptiness you know and it also like it includes instructions on how to create new genetic form this jinky and it's about bringing peace on earth but i also know that you have this line four as well in your pearl sequence so i would love for you to talk about that perspective for us yeah so i was gonna say too this sixth uh gene key here in the pearl this what it made me think of for him is um like because he's an emotional um generator in human design like unlock so when we're talking about unlocking our prosperity and and that our pearl sphere is sort of like our door or our gateway into unlocking that it's like balancing his feelings knowing how to have like a state of diplomacy with others and um like reducing conflict right but keeping his emotional state balanced i bet is his key into that door and so when he's in an unbalanced emotional state it's likely difficult for him to easily attract prosperity and abundance into his life i experience this in this in my pearl i have um control here and um, when I'm controlling things, I can't attract, right? So I think that this has a lot to do with his emotional state, which is really interesting for him. He's got to stay balanced and peaceful in order for all of this to flow. And I think he's he's unlocked and sort of mastered that state for himself. And the fourth line here, this is charity. This line is all about giving. And it can be sort of in its more shadow aspect, hard to hold on to money when you have a four line especially in your pearl, because you can you can get a lot of money and then you want to give it away. You want to help every person who needs you, whether that is with your money or your time or your energy or whatever. This charity in your pearl sphere very much is like the person in front of me needs me. I have the things to give. I'm going to give it to them. And I don't, it doesn't matter um, if I can even afford to give those things, right? Like, mm -hmm. of course, we all want to be in our more empowered, balanced um, state of those energies, but that's what this this is for him. And he is, if you look at, you know, look on his website, he's very involved with a lot of charity. And so that's probably how he sort of feeds that need is he likely is just donating percentages of everything he does into charity and then also sitting on all these boards and actively being involved. And this is all to fulfill that part of him that wants to just help humanity. And so as long as he's in a balanced emotional state um, and he's like in a balanced energy of this give and take sort of charity thing with humanity, he's able to attract a lot of abundance and prosperity into his life. And it seems like he has mastered that. Just like he's mastered a lot of his other spheres. <laughs> <laughs> and that ultimately brings him peace. Exactly. Which yeah. is like so beautiful. Oh. And you know what's interesting? If you look at his gene keys, like zoom out and look at his whole chart. He's got all four and two lines. He only has one fi five line and one one line and the rest of his lines in all of yeah. his spheres are twos and fours That's so crazy. this is just a very creative dancing through life and then um, sharing dancing and sharing. very yeah. connected into the community very connected into like networking and sort of being a chameleon and sort of getting along with everybody being the friendly friend but then retreating and like making a creation on his own in his own little hermit land 
and then sort of like sprinkling it like I, the the two lines remind me of like a fairy that's just sort of like <laughs> sprinkling their creations and dancing around the forest you know and then they like retreat into their little forest like sacred place that nobody knows where it is so like his whole energy is kind of like that <laughs> i love that he retreats into his kitchen <laughs> to make another yeah, amazing <laughs> meal <laughs> yeah <laughs> to make a meal to feed all of us <laughs> and then when we think about his meals we are enlightened like yeah this is, this is what a we, fascinating guy we man. eat his food <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. I just love it. Oh my God. Well, thank you all of you for watching this video. This has been so much fun. Thank you, Ariel, for joining me. We would love to share with you guys some of the things that we have to offer if you feel inspired to work with us. So how can people find you, work with you? What are you currently offering? Um, let us know. Yeah, thank you. So you can find me on my website, arielmaguire.com. I've just started offering human design readings. I'm doing these for your kids if you're a parent. Um, the reading is for the parent about the child. And then all, another new service I'm offering is a human design reading along with a business strategy session. And uh, so you can find those on my website. And I'd love for you to share your most exciting <laughs> news. <laughs> so excited for you the project i love where like the projector is like bouncing you know inviting each other like along the way it's the best <laughs> oh my god okay but wait you guys ariel is fucking amazing okay she is super talented and she's an amazing human being and working with her personally i we taught the business school together has been so fun she is like super amazing to work with so definitely check her out and her website the link to her website is in the description of this video as, as well it's arielmaguire.com and then yes i have exciting very exciting news as well um my new book is coming out called seasons and stargates the official launch day is march 12th it's an astrological guide throughout the year moving through the seasons of astrology, Aries season, Taurus season, going into um, the meaning, the themes that define all the seasons, understanding how and what we're working with during each of those seasons, looking at like there's little calendar like dates and information, and then a deep dive into the new and the full moon of that season and how um, that will be affecting us individually and collectively. It also, I will also have an embodiment workbook that comes out on March 20th, which will be sort of the workshop your way through the book kind of um, uh, workbook, and it's going to be in ebook form. And then along with all of this amazing stuff, I am launching a Starseed Astrology School so if you enjoyed going through the starseed markings, um, when I was going through that, you can learn how to find them, you can learn what they are, and you can learn how to interpret them in the starseed astrology school. And if you sign up for the school, you're going to get the embodiment, the seasons and stargates embodiment workbook for free. Everything is linked below if you're curious and you want to kind of check it out. But my website is channelforgrace.com. So thank you again. Ariel, this has been amazing. I can't wait to do it again. We'll see who comes into our sphere next so we can kind of do the deep dive. <laughs> so freaking excited. Um, thank you guys all for watching and we will see you all again very soon. Satnam. Satnam.